everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Emily Campagno, here with my co-host, Kaylee McEnany, and also joining us today, Fox and Friends first co-host, Carly Shimkus, former NFL sideline reporter and host of the Michelle Tafoya podcast, Michelle Tafoya, and Fox and Friends co-host, Steve Ducey. Now we begin with House Democrats' attempt to televise the trials of former President Donald Trump. Late last week, nearly 40 House Democrats sent a letter to the U.S. Judicial Conference in an effort to rewrite federal standards. Normally, cameras are not allowed in federal courtrooms. But the Democrats claim that televising Trump's trials relating to classified documents in the 2020 election would be beneficial. The letter was spearheaded by California Senate hopeful Adam Schiff, who wrote in the letter, quote, Given the historic nature of the charges brought forth in these cases, it is hard to imagine a more powerful circumstance for televised proceedings. If the public is to fully accept the outcome, it will be vitally important for it to witness as directly as possible how the trials are conducted, the strength of the evidence adducted and the credibility of witnesses. And while critics have slammed the move as yet another partisan stunt, Trump's legal team have actually invited the idea. Watch. I personally would love to see that. I'm convinced the Biden administration does not want the American people to see the truth. Um, and they, they acted on it by filing this protective order, which is an effort to keep important information about this case from the press. But the Wall Street Journal editorial board argues that cameras should stay far away from the courtroom. Quote, cameras can be a distraction from the process of seeking fair justice. That is a particular risk in a Trump trial that will be a global media circus in any case. But that is precisely what Democrats want. A long running O.J. Simpson style trial that consumes public and political attention, especially if it takes place before Election Day in 2024. Steve Ducey, so much to unpack there. What are your thoughts on it all? Well, first of all, I, I get why the Democrats would like to have him on trial on TV so people can see it and they think, oh, he's going to look terrible. I get why his own lawyer says, I would love to have it on TV because he thinks it would help exonerate his client. But at the same time, both sides know that it is longstanding federal precedent, going back to the 40s, not to televise or even to photograph a federal proceeding. Mm -hmm. However... The Georgia trial could actually be televised because it's a state trial. And so being a television guy, I'm going to be a little selfish. I would love to see it on TV because <laughs> both sides would like to see it. I, I can't imagine the ratings. They would be absolutely through the roof. But at the same time, you know, forget about uh, televising it or not. Then you've got uh, the president's, former president's social media. And you've got to figure his social media account is giving his lawyers a headache because it's like, what did he just tweet? Or whatever we call it now. Truth social. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we had one of his lawyers on this morning who said that we there is a system in place, so you got to figure now, uh, while he does have a First Amendment uh, opportunity to say what is on his mind, at the same time, he's got to be careful he doesn't dig himself into a hole. I want to focus on with you something that Steve just touched on in terms of watching the trial, right? Yeah. But what I thought was really interesting was how Adam Schiff, and his with his permanently surprised expression, <laughs> said for the public to accept right. the results. Yeah. That, to me, is a dangerous notion that we somehow wouldn't accept what occurs in a trial. That's, I guess, the Democrat way of, of doing a playbook. But for most of us Americans, we accept what judges levy. Well, we do. And I was around to cover the O.J. Simpson trial. And even though that was televised cover to cover, end to end, beginning to end. It was fantastic. It, it was great television at times. Sometimes it was boring as you know what. But <laughs> I will say that, that even then, with people, uh, all the evidence available to everyone watching, not everyone accepted the outcome because they were biased one way or another. I think the same thing is going to happen here. I don't think this is a good idea to televise it. I'm with you. I'm a television person, and I, I wish I could be a fly on the wall in there. But I do think that sets a precedent that we don't want. I think this turns into a total clown show. I think it turns into the prosecution dramatizing and really, you know, trying to make the president look bad. And by the way, it gives the president billions of dollars of free publicity that is really going to help his campaign. I don't think either of those is particularly good for the country. For someone like Adam Schiff or anybody else on the Democratic side to say, this would be good for the country. <laughs> We're as divided as we can possibly be. This would only 
make that fish, fissure bigger. Yeah, I confess that I cut class the day that the verdict came out of OJ. Oh, oh yeah, big group of us did. Oh, okay, you're it. happy. Yeah, it was in the yeah, it was in the days before the internet. We had no cell phones. So I like, was like Carly and I were like, how how in old? Like seven or eight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shut yeah. up. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> in fact, I was I wasn't even born yet. That's oh how young my I God. Am. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Oh. But Kaylee, let's talk about Michelle. the press. Yes. Hold hands. I, I remember. <laughs> Let's talk about the press, right, and the role that they are playing in this. Yeah, it's a really important question. You know, I filled in for Sean on Hannity on Friday night and asked the press a question that, that they should pursue because it is, in fact, their own reporting. There's a New York Times piece. It is from April of this year. I find these few sentences to be very interesting. It's Katie Rogers. When I was on the Trump campaign, I worked with her briefly on, you know, several pieces. She's a very credible reporter. And here's what she had to say. But he, and this is Biden, does have opinions. In the past, and this is about the prosecution of Trump, in the past, Mr. Biden privately told his close circle of advisors that Mr. Trump posed a threat to democracy and should be prosecuted for his role in the events of January 6th, according to two people familiar with his comments. He also told confidants that he wanted Attorney General Merrick B. Garland to stop acting like a ponderous judge and to take decisive action. Notably absent there is there's no assertion that Biden told this to Merrick Garland. But somehow this ended up on the pages of the New York Times in April. And then soon thereafter, we get these two federal indictments. So my question, if I'm a reporter, and back when I was press secretary, I used to give the press assignments at the end of my briefings, I would have assigned the press, pursue this lead. This is your own reporting. This is the New York Times, who loves to brag when their reporting is right. Jonathan Swan, Maggie Haberman, go check out their Twitters. Huh. All their tweets are, you know, our reporting confirmed in this Jack Smith indictment and that one. Well, what about this reporting? KJP has a gaggle and a few short hours on Air Force One shortly after 4 p.m. Will anyone in the press ask this question? Because they should. Pages of the New York Times, mm -hmm. they should be asked, Joe Biden, is this truly his view? And was this ever communicated to Merrick Garland? It was publicly, at least. Saving the youngest for last. I'm just kidding. I was born during the O.J. Simpson trial. I just want everybody to believe that I wasn't. <laughs> um, I just am constantly stunned at how unbelievable this election cycle is going to be. Uh, the former president now facing 78 felony charges. If he is to be convicted on all counts and given the maximum penalty, he will face a whopping 641 years in prison. And Steve just mentioned the Georgia pending indictment there. So the, the number of charges could go up. And you said that there could be cameras in the courtroom. He also could be getting a mugshot in Georgia, which adds a whole new layer to this as well, just that one picture alone. Uh, so there is that. I also think it's notable whenever Trump's team and Adam Schiff agree on anything. I guess cameras in the courtroom is like the one thing. <laughs> and uh, Trump is saying, you know, I want the cameras because so far all of this being out in the open and all these indictments have worked for me politically. Let's keep the ball rolling. I do think that there are some Republicans who may have shopped around for another candidate in the primaries who see the DOJ is so politically motivated that they're saying, you know what, the best way to fight back against this is to vote for the guy that they're going against or going after. That's the primary, though. The bigger question is, how does this play in the general election with independents who might be more interested on the, in the issues than the indictments? And that has yet to be determined. Uh, that's a so great question, because we must have a fulsome discussion about the economy. Yeah. Like, that's what it's but going to come down also to. Also, Trump right. could use that to his benefit by saying, I'm trying to speak about the issues, no and question. they keep on dragging me to all of these trials. Yeah, exactly. No Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-host Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.